Yeah, exactly that. And I, you know, I, I always, I, I've got a blog post about this, which is on the site, which is, you know, focus on what you want to be instead of what you want to do. And it's a very distinct thing that I live by. So yeah, completely. The money is just a, a, a fabulous byproduct of doing what you love. If you, if you do it right. I love having money and I love not worrying about money, but at the same time, money is not what it's all about. I'd rather have less money and do what I enjoy doing. Welcome to the Laws of Business podcast. Here, we will share the skills you need to make your business a success. Learn about goal setting, productivity, time management, marketing, and much more. Hear inspiring stories with today's best business leaders and join a hub of thousands of passionate entrepreneurs across the world. And now, here's your host, Jamil Jama. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Law of Business podcast. I'm your host, Jamil Jama, and I interview successful entrepreneurs. And today, we have a real successful entrepreneur from um, the UK, from Sheffield, Mark Asquith. And before we start the interview, I'll just give you um, a brief bio of who, of who Mark Asquith is and what he does. Mark Asquith is a serial startup founder. He's a mentor and host of the UK's number one business podcast, Excellence Expected. Uh, Mark Axel is a founder of Excellence Expected and founder of PodcastWebsites.com. PodcastWebsites.com is a, a platform for podcasters, which I use and many other um, podcasters use. It's a real awesome platform. And Mark Asquith also helps startup entrepreneurs and founders. He gives them guidance to succeed in business. So it's a real pleasure to welcome um, Mark Asquith to the show. Uh, Mark, how's it going? Good, thank you, sir. How are you? I'm awesome as well, uh, uh, Mark. Mark, first of all, I want to thank you so much for um, taking your time out to do this interview. I appreciate it so much because I know you run it. You run what three three companies? Two now, two. Yeah, it used to be three up until middle of last year, but two now, thankfully. You run two companies. Um, you're you're a family man, and you're you. Uh, a lot of people must be requesting you for interviews as well. So I appreciate your time. To I appreciate your time uh, very very much. You're really welcome, man. Honestly, it's my pleasure. So, Mark, um, before we get before we get to the questions, the main questions, just want to ask you, what is your backstory, please? What is your entrepreneurial story from when you started until where you are um, currently, please? Yeah, so I came from, like you said, I came from from a little town near Sheffield, um, which is it's not famed for its entrepreneurship. You know, we've got some good businesses here. Don't get me wrong. We've got what now is a semi thriving ish kind of creative and tech culture. Um, but it's an old mining town, you know, and, and when I left school, it was either become a miner, work in a factory or get a job in an office. And I thought that was the, the, the thing. I thought that was it. I thought that was, that's what you did. It was amazing. You know, you get, you get a job in an office, you turn up, it's warm every day. And it's brilliant. You know, you get a paycheck at the end of the month. And I, I did that until I was about 23 or 24. And in fact, I was 23. It was a couple of days after my third, 23rd birthday. And, uh, I got a, I left one office job for another office job and I sold one position to go and work at another position for another two grand a year. And I got to this new position thinking it was going to be all good and fresh and new and shiny and amazing and really fulfilling. And day one, it was crap. I was doing the same thing as I was doing in the old job, albeit for two grand a year or more. And I thought 23 days has got to be more to life than this. So I quit on that day. Um, didn't go back, uh, spoke to the manager. I said, look, I've only been here a few hours. I'm not causing any problem, but I am not coming back tomorrow. And I never went back. And that was it. That was when I was 23. I'm 35 now. Um, and I've been doing this ever since really. I, you know, I, I, I then moved into freelance contract training where I trained digital systems and rapidly went from earning 20 grand a year to 120 grand a year at age 23, which was weird. Congratulations um, Thank you. But it was boring. I quit that as well. Um, like the money was silly. It was silly. And I was fortunate enough to have that crazy amount of money so early on and realized that it did nothing for me. I hated it because I was still unfulfilled. I was still getting up, dreading going in to do this freelance contract. And that's when I started setting up my own businesses. And uh, yeah, that's my entrepreneurial journey. You know, I've, I've got a weird relationship with money. It's not, I love having money and I love not worrying about money, but at the same time, money's not what it's all about. I'd rather have less money and do what I enjoy doing. Mm, so it's about, so it's about who you become. You, you care about more about who you become than, than what you have. Yeah, exactly that. And I, you know, I, I always, I, I've got a blog post about this, which is, on the site, which is, you know, focus on what you want to be instead of what you want to do. And it's a very distinct thing that I live by. So yeah, completely. The money is just a, a, a fabulous byproduct of doing what you love if you, if you do it right. 
that's the that's the same um, mindset I have. <laughs> it's good, man. It's a good way to live. Uh, so, Mark, um, your first business, you um, ran into a burnout. Um, and there's a quote: "Burnout is what happens when you try to avoid being human for too long." That's a quote I found on Google about burnout. <laughs> I hope that. <laughs> You're running yourself into a burnout, and, and um, in, in, how did you run into your, your, your burnout with your first business? What, what, what caused that? Well, I actually ran the first business into the ground. I set up a web design agency because I was in a band, and I said to a friend of mine, we need a website, and he says, yeah, we can build one. So not a nice one, and then he said, it's going to be 800 pounds. I was like, oh, stand by, you're a friend. I can't, what? I, I, do it as a favor. Come on, please. Anyway, he didn't. So I had to learn. I learned how to build websites, locked myself in a room for a year and learned how to build websites in 2004. And when I quit my freelance work, I set up a web business. Um, but the problem is that I, I, was, I was being professional, quote unquote professional. Um, and I didn't know how to run a business without being this fake version of professional, wearing a suit and a tie and being someone that I wasn't. So I ran it into the ground ran into a burnout because I was trying to do too much, trying to be everyone to everything and sorry, everything to everyone and just almost killed myself doing it. It was a nightmare. You know, I was out of it. I almost killed myself doing it. Um, and it was silly. You know, I, I, I was fortunate enough to, to, to be picked up by a couple of business partners who I then went into business with on my second agency, Hacksaw. And we did things so much better and we weren't quote unquote professional. We were just ourselves, you know? And that's, that was the big difference. And that, that, that was Hacksaw, right? Yes. Um, what, what, can you tell us more about Hacksaw, please, Mark? Uh, yeah. So that was a design agency that we ran for 10 years. I just closed it down this year, actually. Well, last year. And we, we were a design agency. We worked with, on web design, brand design, graphic design, all sorts of design. Um, and, 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 you know, we worked all over the world. We worked with some really big people. We, we did, did some really big work. Um, but again, I, you know, I got bored of that. I got, got bored of doing that. And, you know, I was an agency. I was chasing cash flow and pitching to people all the time. And it, it was back to what you and I just spoke about. You know, I wanted to be something different. I didn't want to do what I was doing. So, you know, I wrapped that up. But Axel was fun. I, I loved it. I did 10 good years at, at building an agency, a design agency. And we, we had a lot of fun doing it. You know, made some great friends. And that, did that help you um, start your next um, business, um, podcastwebsites.com? Well, like the, yeah. skills you learned, the skills you learned, like the HTML skills and the coding skills, did that, did that help? Um, yeah, it did, yeah. But it was more about how to build a business and scale a product that I'd learned through Hacksaw and, and building a business. I'd, I'd made a lot of mistakes at Hacksaw because I was a kid. And you know, it, it taught me what to do to make a business work quicker, um, which is why podcast websites moves and, 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 and is more agile and better at what it does. Um, so yeah, it, it was a big, big learning curve. You know, there was no doubt about that. It was a big learning curve, but it was, yeah, you know, the skills I'm very fortunate to be able to code websites and I can always build my own thing. So I can, if I want to build a product, I can, I'm very fortunate enough that I can probably get this thing out. I, I think everyone should have a rudimentary level of coding for sure. Definitely. Definitely. And, um, persistent is a quote, persistence guarantees that results are inevitable. And yeah, um, you exactly. were persistent, so um, you were very successful with your um, website, with your new, with, with your other business, podcastwebsites.com. And we're just going to talk about podcastwebsite.com, uh, Mark. Um, podcastwebsites.com is a platform for um, podcasters. And um, do you, what, can you tell us more about podcastwebsites.com and why, why you started it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So podcast website started when I started my own podcast and I was working at Hacksaw um, and, and, you know, I thought, wait a second, I've got to build this website. I've got to build this podcast. I've got to build all of this stuff. Um, and, you know, I've, I've, I, I, it's a nightmare to put it all together. So if I'm struggling and I, I'm in the industry, how difficult must it be for someone not in the industry? Um, so we put this all in one platform together that helps podcasters like yourself, you know, build a website, build a hub, build a personal brand, a platform around, um, build everything that goes with it um, nice and easy you know, and host the media and build the show out, you know, without having to bolt all these bits together. And that came because I built my show. Um, it, 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 it just, it became such a nightmare to even do my own show because I was trying to bolt all these pieces together. And it was just, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how tough it was to do it. Um, you know, and if I'm struggling knowing how to build these things, what must everyone else be struggling with? So yeah, that's, that's where it was born. And we, we, you know, we really help podcasters. Our mission is to help successful podcasters. Um, and, and that's the host, what, the host is, is all in one as well. And the customer service is all, is all in one as well. 
there's a lot of there's very good customer service with pod, uh, podcast websites because whenever I had a problem, um, they quickly fixed it. Exactly. Whenever, yeah. whenever, whenever I couldn't do nothing myself, um, the customer service team quickly fixed it. Exactly. That's what we do. Um, we we do work like that. Um, we do, we do work in such a way that we'll always support you. We, our prime focus is helping you to succeed and we'll jump on and we'll, we'll give you everything that you need. We'll, we'll support you 24 seven in whatever you want. It's not, you know, you've seen it yourself. What, there is no question that we will not help with them. Definitely. I believe that to succeed in business, you've got to do that. You know? it's, like, it's like, you know, everything about um, a, a website. Well, most things. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's very awesome. Podcast website is very awesome. Um, very much. Thank you so much for um, uh, making it. No, a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for using it and, uh, and for advocating it. That's great. And uh, also, Mark, um, also you help um, entrepreneurs. You help um, entrepreneurs to reach their first $500,000 online. You help businesses to, to, to reach their first $500,000 online, which is quite a lot of money, I would say. Um, how do you go about in doing that? Can someone just go from zero to 500000 or do, do they need to be making a certain amount of money first before they can reach 500000 well, I think 500k is a, you know, it's a big number. Don't get me wrong, but it's a, it's not, a, it's not an unmanageable number. If you hire a team in when you get to 200k or 100k or whatever, you know, you've got to, you've got to plan, and that's where people struggle. That's where people, um, that's where people struggle with. What do I do to get to 50? What do I do to get to 100? How do I scale from 100 to two? You know, that's just that's just how it works. Um, and it's, you know, it's difficult to scale up to these stepping stones. And what I always tell people is that most of the time when you're doing things that aren't working, it's because your products aren't right. It's because you've not understood the market. It's because you've not, you've not assumed that you can make money from an email list of a hundred people. Everyone thinks you need to be huge to make big money online and you don't. Um, and that's, that's my whole point is that everyone can do it. You know, everyone can do it. Definitely, definitely. Um, it's, and it's not, it's not just about the money as well. You also, um, in Excellence Expected, you also um, help people to build their business and, better, and live a better life. How, how would they go about in doing that? Or how do you help them with that, Mark? Um, well, it's about lifestyle. You, know, you, 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 you work to live. You don't live to work. Um, it's all about finding a balance, you know, allowing work to take from you what it needs to take and allowing life to take what it needs to take when it needs to take it. and not, not working 6am till 6pm and, you know, this constant working mode that everyone seems to be in, you know, yeah, it's fine to do that when you need to do it, but you can't live like that forever. And I think a lot of people need to know that. I think a lot of people are sold the dream on books or whatever. And, and it's, 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 it's killing people, you know, and it's, it's ruining families and it's ruining friendships and it can't be, it can't be like that. Um, so that's what I try and educate people a little bit on is that, look, you can have a life. It's all right to not want to be a bazillionaire. It's all right to just want enough money to live and enjoy what you're doing. Like, that's fine, you know? But um, don't, don't most entrepreneurs need to work more than um, 40 hours a week? Like, um, I've, I've read that most entrepreneurs need to work at least 60 to 80 hours a week. Well, yeah, but here's the secret though. You're never working and you're never not working. You chose to be an entrepreneur because you love what you're doing. The old Einstein quote, you know, you'll never work a day in your life if you do what you love, to paraphrase Einstein. So we're never working, man, but we're never not working. The point is you should never say no to things like family time. You can never say, no, I'm too busy to your kids. You can never say, no, I'm too busy to your partner because I'm an entrepreneur and I'm working. That's silly. Definitely. So you've got to have good time management skills. Obviously, as entrepreneurs, you need to have good time, uh, time management skills. No, man, you've got to have good times. That's it. you just got to have good times. Time, like, time management's easy. You just do the important things at the time they need doing and do the right things. You know, time management isn't hard. We can all find time. If I, let's say if a kid, one of our kids gets injured at playing football and the ambulance is, is roaring past and we get a call from the school saying, your kid's been injured. What happens? You drop everything and you go. Why? Because it's important. Time management goes out the window. You manage to fit that in because it's important. We always fit in what is important. So you just got to fit in. What are the most important things I need to do today? I got to get that proposal done. I got to get that product out. I got to do this. I got to spend time with a partner. I got to take my kids out to play football. You know, we all get time for these important things. Important is important for a reason. And Everyone says, well, yeah, I'm in business and, you know, I ain't got time for that because I'm trying to build a business. Well, what's the point in building a business and not having anyone to share it with? It's silly. So you've got to prioritize. 
your your um, time management. Yes, definitely. And uh, Mark, um, you've um, built two successful businesses um, so far. You're a serial entrepreneur, so you might do more. more I don't know. Um, what is what is your um, mission? What is your mission in life? Just do do fun stuff that helps people. That's it. Just do fun stuff that helps people. That's it. Like like what like what you're doing with the excellence expert and podcast websites. Yeah. Um, you know what? What do you think is the best platform for for entrepreneurs um, currently? The best platform mm, I th- at the minute, I think Instagram. Personally, Instagram. Okay. Yeah, I think Instagram's got a lot of going for it. I think it's it's, it's doing a lot more around storytelling. So I I do think Instagram at the minute is a really strong platform. Yeah, I've I've had um, I've met I've had, I've met quite a few I've met more people on Instagram than I have on Facebook, and I only just joined in. Um, well, I joined a while ago, but honestly, I've been active in, uh, in August. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you can do that. You know, you don't need to be there all the time or I've been there. You don't, have to, you don't have to have been there for 10 years. You know, it's all good. You can, everyone can start when they start, you know. That's cool. That's cool. And Mark, um, I, know, I, know it's about you. I noticed something about you. You don't like making excuses and you don't like other people making excuses. And there's a quote by, there's a quote by, um, there's a quote I found online. There's a quote that says, Excuses will always be there for you. Opportunity won't. How do people stop making excuses and um, get things done? Just by simply doing the thing that feels uncomfortable. Just by when you, you know, we all procrastinate. We all put stuff off. I do it. Everyone does it. Whoever says they don't do it is lying. I guarantee it. And, but you've got to do, you've got to get into the habit of, for the most part, not doing. We all do. Even the most productive, most voracious person will make excuses and they'll procrastinate certain things but to be successful you've got to get into the habit of just being a bit more uncomfortable than most people you know do that recording when you're too tired to do the recording go out and see that person jump on that call and you know just talk to that person when actually you think there might not be any need to because you don't know what will happen it's a really good thing um so you know you've got to you've got to be uncomfortable a little bit don't make excuses most people make excuses because they're, they're afraid. It's a fear thing. You know, don't be afraid. No one's judging you. No one cares. They've got their own stuff going on, you know? So just, just get it done and just, just be a little uncomfortable. Mm. So get comfortable being uncomfortable. Exactly. And also there's a quote by, I think it's a Jim Rohn or something. I'm not, I'm not too sure. There's a quote where Jim Rohn says, if you do what's hard, your life will be easy. If you do what's easy, your life will turn out to be hard. Exactly that. Wonderfully spoken. And uh, Mark, I've noticed that you offer a lot of free coaching, which is, um, which is um, very awesome because a lot of people charge thousands of dollars for um, coaching. Um, can you tell us more about your free coaching, uh, please, uh, please, Mark? Yeah, yeah. So every Friday, 4 p.m. UK, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, free group coaching for about 30, 35, 40 minutes. Um, so you can ask me a question. Um, I'll, the, the link is excellent, expected, excellence-expected.com forward slash free coaching just ask me any question you want i will answer it on the free coaching sessions and anyone can turn up i don't charge anything for it you just turn up to the session and uh, anyone can join it's a great session we've got a great little community great set of people that turn up every week it's wonderful to just be able to do it you know yeah that's that's definitely that's that's, that's great value because a lot of people are charging a thousand dollars for uh, group coaching but you're doing it for free yeah exactly it's nice to be nice <laughs> that's, that's, that's nice and Mark um, so if anybody wanted to contact you uh, where can they uh, find you well they should come to the free coaching honestly you know th- there's no better way of, of seeing me and, and, and contacting me than having a, a, a chat with me on the free coaching session so honestly excellence-expected.com forward slash free coaching is the way to roll it I think that's awesome and Mark I want to thank you again um, I want to thank you again for taking your time to this interview I appreciate it so much again Hey, man, it's a real pleasure, honestly. You've got a good show. You're a great host. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Thanks, Mark. And I want to thank all the listeners for listening. Um, if, you know, if you know anybody who that this interview will benefit, please share it with them. Please also leave a comment in the comment section and subscribe. And I'm your host, Jamil Jamba. This is the Law of Business Podcast. And that was Mark Asquith. Thank you all very much for uh, listening. Thanks for listening to the Laws of Business Podcast. Find out more about us on thelawsofbusiness.com. Thank you for being a part of our journey.